Hi, I am Sarah Ruiz and today I am going to quickly walk you through a kind of overview of foundation paper piecing. And this is in support of my mini maze pattern. Um, here's my paper template. I'll show you the part of the quilt real quick. This is the um, first mini maze pattern that I made. So you can see this is the block right here, this little six inch by three inch block. This is the unit. This is what the paper template looks like. This is for the unit A. Um, remember that the paper will be on the back side of your block. So this will actually be on the correct side of your block. So if you can see the lines there. So this is an A block right here on the edge of the quilt. So I'm gonna walk you through very quickly how to start paper piecing if you never have before. There are instructions in the pattern, but um, you know sometimes it's really helpful to have a visual. So first of all, um, I have all my pieces here. These are pieces that I have pre-cut um, according to the dimensions in the pattern to size. So I'm gonna lay them out here briefly. Um, these are just scraps from my stash. The um, maze lines, the thin lines here are going to be white. And then the background, which is denoted by the B on the template, is actually going to be a color. Um, so that's how I am working this one. So I'm going to just lay out the first couple pieces. Um, I had them in order here to keep them straight. Um, but I'm just going to lay out a few. I'm not going to piece the whole block. Um, they are a little time consuming because of the number of pieces. But I'll just show you how to get started. So there's a good example. So this is going to be my piece 1B. This is 2M. This is 3B, this is 4M, and this is 5B. Again, um, the B means background and the M means maze line. Um, and so once you have your pieces cut, um, the Bs and the Ms are really just reminders for you when you look at the template. The key to keep in mind is that you are gonna go in numerical order. So start in this corner, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, it is a little tricky with this block to start in the corner because these are small pieces and you'll have a big flap of paper, as you'll see. But um, starting in the corner here and then starting in the opposite corner when you make the unit B um, will make your seams nest when these two blocks come together. So just trust me on it and go with it. So I'm gonna clear all these pieces over here off to the side um, and just start with two you're gonna need um, your piece number one and piece number two to begin. So the first thing I like to do, actually the first thing I like to do, and I'm gonna do it now before I forget, you can't see it on the video, but I am going to lower the stitch length on my sewing machine. I go down to about um, 1.4 to uh, 1.6. You may have heard the clicking. I have a mechanical stitch length gauge on my machine. So first thing I'm gonna do, remember this is going to be um, where the right side of the block is. I just flipped it over, so here's my first piece. Here it is. I'm gonna put just a tiny dab of glue there. This is um, Elmer's washable school glue. You can use um, pretty much whatever you have as long as it's washable. You can use a fabric glue pen. You can also use a straight pen. But I'm gonna put this piece here. I am going to put this piece right side up on the wrong side of the paper. This is the side of the paper I'm gonna be building my block on. This is the side I'm gonna be sewing on. So now I have placed that piece, and if you look, you should be able to just see through the paper a little bit. You can see, it's not sticking, um, this triangle fully covers this entire 1B triangle with at least a quarter inch on either side. If you cut your pieces to size, as I've described in the pattern, that should give you plenty of um, overage. They have been designed to be oversized. Um, yes, you will waste fabric because you will trim it, but I promise you um, it is better to waste fabric now than have a piece that doesn't fit. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take my piece 1B. I'm gonna line it up right here. Um, you can line it up even here. I'm gonna line it up a little bit here because again, the important part, I want to make sure that it extends a quarter inch past this past, oh, sorry, past this line. I'm gonna be sewing on the line between one and two because these are pieces one and two. So I just wanna make sure that this piece covers this seam and extends past it so that once it is sewn, 
this piece will be folded back like that and it will cover the entire 2M spot. So hopefully this makes a little sense. I am now going to turn this over. I'm going to take care to make sure that these pieces do not shift. Come over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew. Now what I choose to do is start just a couple stitches before that line begins. I'll start, I'll backstitch once and then I'll keep going. So I sew along that line. I went a couple stitch pass, stitches past the end. I'll backstitch one more time, go forward again, and then cut it. All right. So this is the first piece, trim those threads. So you have sewn, you can see your stitches on the paper side. When you fold it over like this, you can see this piece is gonna fold back like this. And you're gonna have your one uh, B piece and two M. Now, the next part is you're gonna to wanna to trim this seam allowance. I like to leave my paper on this side, fold it all the way back like this. You wanna make sure that you're trimming the right spot. Um, I'm gonna to have to move it just off my sewing table to trim it. I personally really love this add a quarter ruler to trim, but the point is you're just gonna trim a quarter of an inch. You might be able to just see this on the edge of the video. So there it is trimmed. I've trimmed that seam allowance. Now I can open this back up, I can fold this over. You can take it to an iron if you want, if you really wanna get the seam crisp. Um, you can also just finger press it like this. They also sell little finger pressing tools um, or seam rollers, but most of the time um, you can finger press. So I have my piece 1B and 2M. Next is gonna be 3B. This is the piece I have cut for 3B. So again, come back to this side. This is the right side of the fabric, right side of the fabric. And from this point on, you're always keeping right sides together. So this is the right side of this fabric. This is the wrong side. I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna line it up right with the edge of that white fabric that I did there. Again, I can see when I turn it over, I can see that the fabric extends more than a quarter inch past this line. These are pieces 2M and 3B, so I'm gonna be sewing along the line between 2M and 3B. So I have these pieces here. Again, I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine, line it up, start just a couple stitches ahead of the line, back stitch, sew right along that line again. Go a little bit past the edge, back stitch, and I'm done. Now I have my third piece in place, and you can see how this block is gonna build. Again, I'm gonna fold this back along the stitching line and trim. Now, if this is the first time you've paper pieced, this pattern is actually pretty simple for paper piecing. Um, you can do, oops, I missed a little spot there. Let me trim that. You can do a lot more complex things with paper piecing, um, but uh, this is not that. This is just straight lines. You're just making a block. Um, I've had a couple people ask me in the past, could you just traditionally piece this block? And the answer is, I mean, yes, in theory you could, but these are such skinny strips and the alignment is so key um, to this pattern, to making the maze blocks line up at the end that, um, the, the foundation paper piecing really ensures that your blocks are extremely accurate. They are gonna measure right um, as they should measure. And when you put them all together, you know, your lines are gonna line up from block to block and give you this really cool maze effect. So let's see, I will do one more. So here I have, I'm gonna sew piece number four now, 4M. My maze lines are white, so I have my white strip. Gonna line it up like that, turn it over. Again, you can usually see through the paper a little bit. You can hold it up to a light or a window to help. I can see that it extends a good quarter inch past there. So all is well. Line that up, flip it over. The flipping over is maybe the trickiest part. You gotta make sure to really hold it so that your pieces don't shift. Just 
just like before, so along this line. As you can see, the lines get a little longer. So take your time. So again, sewn that block. When I flip it over, I'm gonna have another nice maze line. But first, before I keep going, I'm gonna trim this seam, trim it to a quarter inch. Um, I had someone ask me in a paper piecing class that I taught one time, like, do you even really need to bother trimming the seams? I mean, it's all gonna come together, right? And that's true, but if you don't trim those seams down to a quarter inch, like, you're just gonna be building up a lot, um, a lot of fabric bulk there. So, finger pressing this. You know, when I'm foundation paper piece, most of the time I do usually set up um, a pressing mat right here next to my machine, and so I do usually actually use an iron. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just finger pressing. I'll add one more. This is piece number five. You do have to be careful as you go along. You know, I had originally had it up here. That's fine on this side of the block, but you can see this orange piece won't extend past the block on this side. So you gotta make sure it's kind of centered here. Make sure it looks good. Flip it over. Yep, I've got plenty of, uh, Plenty of seam allowance there. Once you get going and kind of get the hang of it, um, it's easy to get into a groove. Um, I will also say if you are if you really get the hang of it and really are enjoying it, it is possible to chain piece paper piecing. So you could have several of these templates going at once. You know, you, you do pieces one and two, like multiple blocks at once, and then you add the third piece multiple blocks at once. That's actually what I did when I was making my original quilt. Um, I've had a lot of experience paper piecing though, and if you do that, you just gotta make sure you stay organized so you're pulling the right pieces at the right time. Okay. So I'm gonna stop there for now. I'm not gonna finish the whole block, but I think you hopefully get the hang of it. Here we've got piece number one, two, three, four, five. You can see how um, the maze lines are starting to build up. They're nice and accurate. You know, the, the maze lines themselves are, um, are a quarter inch, so you should be able to measure that. Once you have completed the whole block with all 13 pieces, you will be ready to flip it over. And then you will trim on this outer dotted line. So the inner solid line, um, is what the finished block will be. And then the shaded quarter inch around it is your quarter inch seam allowance. So you do wanna make sure to trim on the dotted line. Don't trim off the seam allowance or you'll have trouble when you put the blocks together. But yeah, um, so I hope this helps. And uh, if you have any questions or comments about paper piecing or, um, are having trouble, you can find me on social media. Feel free to reach out. Um, my uh, Instagram name is Saroy, or you can find my blog at uh, sarahruiz.com. So hope this helps. Enjoy.